What's going on everybody? Travis with the REC Garage and in this video we are working on Coffee Break, the 1929 Ford Roadster pickup. Uh, we get the steering hooked up, we get the motor and trans drive line all hooked up. Um, steering box is the main thing we focus on this video and I do something pretty cool that I haven't seen done anywhere else. Um, comment below if you have done this or if you've seen it done before because I looked everywhere I haven't seen it. Um, big shout out to Old Yankee Speed for sending me the motor mounts. Uh, there's actually more to come from Old Yankee Speed. Pretty cool setup. Uh, I should have that next Coffee Break video. So let's just dive right into it. It's going to be a good one. All right, I think I'm on the brink of something that will work uh, for steering on your AV8. So, I'm going to get into it. Um, so, what I'm thinking here, get a 36 box and a 32 box, mash them together. Oh, I really just wish I had a radiator. So I could tie everything together and just plop the hood up. Instead, I gotta take it off every time I'm gonna do this. All right, I'm gonna take this out because this, I don't even know what this is. I think it's a 32 box. No, it's my lay box, I think. But it's not correct. Nothing sits right. Something off about it, so I'll take it off. Maybe not. So, what I got going on here in this little Frankenstein um, steering box here. So, uh, I guess let me stand you guys up so I can explain it better. All right, so what we have here is a 32 to 34 main section here. 36, I don't know what this is called, but this is what they normally look like on 32 to 34s, okay? B3580 A, uh, that's a part number for this, but not going to use that. We are going to use the one from the 36 and also use the 36 uh, pinion shaft, I think it's called, and 36 steering shaft and worm gear, obviously. And then all the bearings associated with that. So, and I also reversed it. And all I did so far, there's no seals in this, but you can tell it's sticking out of the wrong end. You're flipping it upside down because if you have it normal, um, when you turn, this is how you'd be looking at it. If you turn it, the pinion would be going the wrong way. So, sector shaft, sector shaft. I keep calling it the wrong thing. This is a sector shaft. Sector shaft and worm gear. Okay, so if I had it normal, I'd turn my steering and the sector shaft would turn the wrong way. So I had to reverse the steering box and literally all I did was take the steering shaft out with the worm gear, stick it in through the other side and put everything back together. So now I gotta find out how I'm gonna seal all this stuff up. So first off, I think I'm gonna take this guy here and figure out a way to get him uh, welded on the inside of this here and probably cut this circle off. So I'll have this sticking up here like it normally does, but it would be this way, but I'm gonna have it this way. Um, and also, 
Um, da -da -da. This guy goes down here. Um, I might try and find a way to put a seal in here and maybe have to make this bigger because I don't think this the steering shaft, uh, the steering column cover fits over this as nice as it fits over this side. So um, there's some there's some fiddling to do, but it's only with the caps and covers and seals uh, because the rest of it should should seal just fine. Um, but obviously we'll tell when uh, we go to drive it. And obviously you can see there is no flange here, so how am I going to bolt it into the frame? Um, I'm going to kind of mock it up and see, but I think I'm going to just buy a, uh, a Millworks Old Yankee flange that you use for the F1 boxes to put in Model A's, or I'll make my own. I'll probably just make my own, but that is an option. You can probably get one of those. Maybe you might have to trim this down. I mean, uh, sand it down, turn it down. I'm not sure because I haven't done it. Just figuring it out. But they sell a flange that works for Model A's. So that is definitely a nice option. Or you can make it yourself. Um, so, but everything seems to work. And when you flip it, the shaft comes down at the bottom which helps with uh, putting a flathead V8 in your Model A, you get more room. So I'm thinking this is really gonna work. Um, so right now I'm just gonna mess with the top and bottom areas and try to find seals and stuff to make sure this, the goo doesn't just run out of it. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, um, I got a couple of these caps, so I put one on there just so nothing moves. I'm gonna take this one, cut the flange off, trim this thing down so it's just a circle and it fits um, either on or in that hole weld it up so this when the cap comes on it's going to be one piece Come on. it's going to fit on there like that and that's how I'm going to weld it I'm going to put uh, mock everything together slide this all the way up here um, weld it around, take it off, fully weld it. Then this cap from the top will turn into a bottom cap with, I forgot what this sleeve is called, but it's got the sleeve in there. This is for the horn rod in case I ever want to use that. Um, probably not going to, but the option is there. <clears throat> and the top one, I'll just take this and I think take this cork cap here figure out what this dimension is if it's uh three quarters or whatever it is punch this circle out bigger so this will go around this and inside of this and that's the seal for that and it'll just literally be held on by the two bolts and i'll either have to put a strip of metal around this so i can tighten the steering tube on here uh, but I can always figure that out later. It's not too big of a deal. Um, or I can take this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this flange off and this flange off. Weld this to this. And I could weld this to that. That is an option if you want to go totally stock. I'm not going totally stock, so I'll probably never need this connection here. Um, so, yeah, this is just getting welded to that. And Bob Gironti there. I don't know. Maybe I will, just to make it nice. Nice, nice. I might weld that on there.
No touching. Very hot. No filler killer. All right, so I'm just gonna swap that on with this. That'll be the bottom cap all set. Um, then the top. Just like I said, I'm gonna take this and take this top. Hopefully. Hopefully I got room for, yeah, I should have room. Room for the column to slip on there. Weld that on. Bob's your auntie. All right, so don't need to be welding anymore. I got the steering box all reversed. So the shaft usually comes out of this end, um, and the bottom is here. Let's see. That's the fill right there. It's going to be upside down. Probably not going to use that. Um, but that now has the receiver for the steering column. The bottom now has a normal bottom end uh, to receive the, uh, what do you call it, the horn button to maybe figure out how to mount the switch there. I won't be able to use the bulb because it needs two tabs for it to kind of clip onto. Um, I could weld this, that piece that was on the tiny flange on here to kind of help it out, but I'll probably figure something out if I want to go that route. I don't think I'm going to use the bulb. Um, I got the pitman arm on there. I might have to file away the... The big teeth on the pitman arm, because you see how this slot here, a big slot, a big slot here. There's four big slots or big teeth on the pitman arm that it locates in four different locations. And if it's not in the space I want, um, all you really have to do is take a nice sharp triangle file um, and file those teeth, those bigger teeth, into these. Um, and it just, it's essentially just two. It's the size of two of them that don't have the V in the middle. So you just file that V out and it's another groove and you can literally put the pitman arm anywhere you want. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to do that, but I'll test it first. Um, and it's actually sticking straight up right now. Or like straight forward right now, cause it's gonna sit like that. Um, what else here? I adjusted it so it's, it's pretty smooth. It does what it needs to do. What do I need to figure out? Oh, the flange. So I need to make a flange that bolts up to the Model A frame. And I can set it back probably from that, from this here, because it was up against the frame. And I doubt this was hitting. It's probably this. So I'll measure from here over uh, 3 eighths of an inch. And that can be the start of my flange. And then I'll weld it probably on the back side there. Um, Hopefully there's enough room to get these uh, nuts out. We'll see. Uh, I might have to take this apart again, at least to just get this off, weld it, and put it back on. I don't think I want to weld it on here. And who knows? I think it might work. I think I'm going to emulate the Model A um, flange, just so it's the same. I don't have to drill any more holes. I might just have to make it wider. 
I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to do some more stuff. I'll figure that out. But I think I'm gonna go with a two bolt flange and see if I can make it work. Uh, but so far, I think this is a really nice, um, what do you call it? Alternative to an F1 box if you can't find an F1 box anywhere. Um, this can kind of work out for you. Yeah, I can see. I guess that might work. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, so I'm going to figure that stuff out, and then I'll come back to you when I do. So here's the uh, the flange, hole sawed out, drilled, countersunk to make it look nice. Uh, now I'm just literally going to cut this out in the bandsaw and touch it up on the belt grinder and it should be set to weld onto that uh, little snout piece. So like I did with my uh, Model A Coupe when I put the F1 steering box in, I clamped this uh, hole saw, a tube notcher, to the frame. I did see outside of the frame, but I have fenders on now, and I really don't feel like taking the fenders off, so I'm just going to drill it from the inside. And that's where I want to go. It's opening that hole up and also bring it down a touch uh, because the flange also needs to fit so actually for reassurances I'm gonna put the flange on it Cut that hole, it should be that size. There it is, okay.
Yep, okay. So it fits in there, there's enough room. So right where I have it, it will be perfect. I'll just need to weld up those old holes and drill a couple new ones. Uh, the new ones, I won't know where they go yet until I have... Well, actually, I could drill the holes. I can drill the holes, bolt the flange on, and then slip the steering box through it, get my angle correct, then tack it in place, bring it out, fully weld it. That's probably what I'll do. So I will drill the new holes after I drill the center hole. So nothing to it but to do it right now. So. Not a job for a cordless drill. I hate these things, but this is exactly what they're for. Torque for days. So we're going to take six inches out of this. I feel like that's a good place, a good thing to do. So where though? Where's the question? I guess right down here. That makes sense.
So as you can see, I got some type of contraption going on here. I got a couple V-blocks holding, you know, the shaft straight. I don't know if you can tell. There's a bunch of crap everywhere and not much room. But it's holding it straight and I have it clamped to this plate to keep the V-blocks, you know, flat. So one's not different than the other kind of thing. And I have this one overlapping this V-block. So they're kind of, they're in line. And then this one just gets clamped to it. I don't know if this makes any sense, but it's straight. It looks like there's a gap there, but I just didn't bevel this side as much as I did this side. But this one I beveled all the way to the inside diameter. So once I weld this, it's gonna be full penetration. Um, I'm not gonna to have to worry about putting a sleeve on it or anything. It's gonna be 100%. So let's uh, start tacking.
You can't see anything I'm doing. Okay, so these uh, tapered steering wheels get a little key, and obviously the nut. I got this as a new kit from uh, Third Gen Auto. They got a lot of nice stuff. bit of persuasion can help. Put that on like that. It's probably a few chewed up threads so I'm gonna have to hit this on with the impact. No big deal. They're not super chewed at all. It's just too tight and I don't have the correct die to make it right. So I'm just gonna send it on. I got your prayers have been answered. I'm not gonna send it on with an impact because I don't have the right adapter but to put 15 16 socket on my impact. So I'm going to do it nice and gentle like. Is the center that's easy all right so like i thought uh pitman arm does not point straight down when it's in one of the notches it's either too forward or too far back so see those big teeth there i'm just going to take this triangle file right in the center of it and make two more teeth I'll make a V in it, creating two teeth out of that one. And I'm going to do that on all four. So now I'll be able to put this any position that I want.
So, these steering box is in. Uh, as you can see, it sits pretty low, and the steering comes out down here, so it should give me plenty of room for some exhaustages. I spaced it out a little bit. All I did was I had some exhaust gaskets, and it's the same flange as an exhaust gasket pretty much, so I used that. Um, I spaced out a tad because it was hitting here. And oh, I got my pitman arm. Facing down, uh, I just need those uh, ball studs for my drag link because I got nothing. Might look in the back and see if I have any, but I'm pretty sure I don't. Got the steering wheel on here. I think it's a good height. I really can't tell yet, but I probably should have put a seat in here before I did anything, but you know, I'm stupid. But I think I want to have, yeah, it's be plenty, plenty of room here. This is about like where I'm going to sit. I'll make it so I sit like this. Yeah, that should be all right. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it on this right now until I get some ball studs and I can put my drag link in. Then everything should be connected and when I get my motor mounts, uh, I can hook the wishbone end to the tranny so the front end's not so wobbly anymore. I have to be connected to the rear end and everything will be hunky-dory. Nice, nice. So, that's one big step here. Um, actually, now that I think of it, that's really close, and it's only the shaft, it's not even the, uh, what do you call it? It's not even the steering column. So, I'm probably going to have to bend this pedal out a touch, because, yeah, it still hits. It still hits, but, you know, that's, that's my fault. But actually, it just takes a little bend of the steering, uh, of the pedal, Unfortunately, I had them powder coated, so it's probably gonna suck. It's probably gonna ruin it. Um, but I guess it is what it is. I can just, you know, kind of blend the burnt powder coat and cover it with paint. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do though. I'll figure it out though. Won't be too bad. Yeah, so I think this is going to work out very well, as, as you can see, it sits really low in the frame. And that gets pushed back. It's almost not even, it's not even here almost. Um, so I'm, this is very promising. So I was working on the steering a little bit. I put the put the drag link in there, um, and for some reason it was too long by an inch and a half. Um, so I cut it down, but I cut it down two and a half inches, like an idiot. Um, so now it's an inch short, but. I have another one if I need to, or I can sleeve that one and extend it. That's it's not too big of an issue. 
But I was talking to Tim, and he said to have the motor and trans in, and I kind of remembered that's definitely the way to go. Get all the weight on everything, get it where it needs to sit, and then figure out the length of everything. Um, yeah, I should, and I should really have an adjustable one on there because it's, you know, it's not really custom, but it's kind of custom. So I have the motor and I got to go back here and grab water pumps and a transmission. Uh, it's dark. So, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff I need to grab right now. Uh, pumps gonna be easy. They're up top here. Um, they're actually kind of semi-organized. Got a set of truck pumps, but I also have I have so many passenger side water pumps. Look how many I got? It's crazy. one seems promising. It's green. Do I have the green one to match? That one's just dirty. This one's really clean. Like almost too clean. That one's nice. This one's nice, I guess, for now. Now, the transmission. Maybe the real doozy. So, let's see. All right, so we got two top shifts to choose from. I just gotta figure out which one is a 39. So that should, it might be tricky. I like that one. So we'll see. I might have to steal some gears from a side shift um, for the synchros, but we'll see when I open them up. So I just opened one up, and I'm going to double check on uh, uh, the Van Pelt sales on what a 39 looks like because I haven't looked in a while, but I'm pretty sure this is because it's got uh, synchros in two places, so that would be one to two, two to three. Got yeah. Uh, so bingo bango. <laughs> Uh, Zephyr. Zephyr, that's it. Hold on, that's right. Like, it's Zephyr. Zephyr, yeah. Yeah, I have the whole transmission. Uh-huh. Which is, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to put my Zephyr transmission behind, um, one of Joe's motors that he has. He has a 21 stud he was building, um, but got too impatient. So, he's going to finish building it. Then I'm gonna buy it from him. So I'm gonna have a built 21 stud with a Zephyr transmission behind it and then a Columbia two speed behind that. <laughs> that sounds like a hell of a setup. This car is gonna be insane. It's gonna take me a long time to build it, but it's gonna it's gonna have all the right parts. Cause I'm also gonna put the McCullough supercharger on it too. Oh, it's, 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 it's like the culmination of, um, everything that I want in a car, in my dream car.
All right, so Jacob was here today. You saw him in the time lapse. Uh, he has got. He helped me get the trans mount um, actually on because while well, me and Ken were messing with this last time, uh, I had the wrong mount on the trans, so it didn't work. So we swapped it out while we were there, and then this cross member here, the one uh, that belongs in Model A, was just in the way. Um, I've seen a bunch of uh, people, you either take this out or you drop the top of the F1. And I didn't want to do all that, um, so that's why I didn't. And so I just took that out. So it, this is the new cross member now, so it's all good. If I need to make something else and like weld it in here, I will. But I don't think it's going to need anything. I'm not going to be... A tearing apart tearing down the road in this thing it's just gonna be you know putzing around I really don't uh, drive the hell out of anything I know I don't drive anything anyway so look one car it's my wife's so and I don't know if you saw but I have running board brackets I had them in the back shop I really forgot I had them so now I can stand on the running boards I do need those uh, little carriage bolts to actually bolt them on but they're supported I love the fitment of the rear tires um, but I don't think it's gonna last because I just noticed my 41 shackles um, I put those in to get a little lower, and they're too low. And the spring is literally sitting on the uh, rear axle right now. So I gotta get different shackles. Um, probably go with stock model A axle uh, shackles, but you know, is what it is. It was a little lopsided, so I like pushed down on here to figure out what was going on and it really didn't move and I looked right here and I was like oh it's sitting on the axle other than that everything's all good I think I might even go down some more honestly because it's oh uh, no never mind I think it'll probably stay the same it'll go higher damn it but I might take the spring pack apart again and put a bend here with the press cold. Um, don't heat the springs up, just bend it cold and see if I can get a another couple inches lower. Another inch, I mean. So that'll help me back out. Um, it'll probably give me the stance back that I had with these shackles but obviously these don't work um and i have the hood and hood and grill on again with the thixton and the air cleaners and when i push this down to where it touches here it does not it like misses by that much so the setup will work so far i, I still gotta find out where the motor lies i think it's gonna be a little lower also what i got in the mail is you guessed it old yankee speed co front aviate motor mounts so i'm going to be putting these these in quick and showing you how easy it really is all right so they even give you the hardware to put this these motor mounts in which is nice so You're going to be bolting it through the holes, the stock shocks. So, hopefully, I'm going to fit right about there. It's kind of hard to see, uh, especially when it's a full fendered car, but you'll kind of get the gist.
All right, you'll we'll have to try in a bunch of different ways. Um, try in which way's best. Get a block of wood, put it over here somewhere, and just push on the bolt to compress that bottom rubber, and you should be able to get some thread started on that nut and get the washer on also. So that's that, pretty much. And they're on.